It is sad that when a person in your life that you grew up with, especially from how your parents exposed you, is suddenly gone and you can't do anything about it. And at least they left out to one of the greatest musics we will ever get from music history, honestly. Hello everybody, I'm Entity Rockers Living the Yellow Summer Rain. And sorry I haven't been making videos a lot lately, mostly it's because, no, I wasn't sick or anything. I've been working a lot with my dad, at, at, at still, and I'm still am. And sorry if you see me like with pants on, because most, because I mean, sorry if you see me like, you know, with like the pants that I don't usually wear in the videos. Mostly it's because, I mean, not like I'm not saying pants, but I'm talking about like the different style, uh, types of pants. Or long, uh, long uh, sleeve pants that I don't wear in my videos. I basically wear like basically a comfortable, put, uh, basically pajamas because I basically film videos like at night. Something like that. Or sometimes I film videos at morning. I don't really upload videos that much on YouTube that much. But I, I have no idea what should I do so far regardless to YouTube. But it, it depends. Because especially from the COVID that's been going insane lately. Especially it's been increasing like crazy. Like it's nobody's business. It feels like it was like the early of the birth of it. But worse honestly. Because I have a feeling that it's going to get worse. But okay. I don't want to talk too much about the subject matter, but today is a memorial and a, day, a memorial day of um, one of our one of my favorite uh, songwriters and musicianship that passed away at a young age. And one is John Lennon from the Beatles, as you can see, that's my shirt. And second is Pantera or Dimebag Daryl from Pantera. In the early days, his name was Diamond Daryl, but now his now his real name is Dimebag Daryl. Well, his that's his nickname. And sorry if you hear like you know that beeping, you know, dick, 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 settle down. I'm currently playing the music. I'm playing Pantera. Um, now, right now, I'm basically now I'm just uh, recently I've been playing um, this album Pantera's Vulgar Display of Power. I'm going to do my review on this album later on. I don't know when's it gonna be uploaded, but this album so far, what I'm listening to is definitely my favorite album from Pantera so far. Sec my second place is Cowboys from Hell, and my third place is Reinvented the Steel. So. So far, and I gotta get the um, following albums, The Great Treadmill Southern album, and also Far far Beyond Driven. Those are the albums I will get. And, dip it, it's, well, wow. Today, we, not only did we lost John Lennon, the fun, a member of the Beatles, but we also lost Dime, Dimebag Dell from Pantera, a groove metal band, that's what a lot of people would consider. So, but if you look at the catalog of Pantera, they were more of a glam metal band at the time, but now they're more branch off to a like groove metal because they took thrash metal and it made it more of a slim slower tempo change or not tempo change but slower tempo sound or or speed of it and John Lennon's cause of death was an assassination from Mark David Chapman who shot him while he was signing autographs outside of his home and that was where he was shot out of out of nowhere and it's insane and fans are insane like not like all fans but some fans are just insane and deranged fans out there. And for Dimebag Daryl, it's the same thing, but here's the difference. John Lennon was signing his autographs outside, while Dimebag Daryl was playing a show. While a fan went up on stage, and he actually, his name is Nathan Gale, who shot him, I believe, three bullets to the, to the back of the head. And there's no way you can revive from that. Revive. There's no way you can get, there's no way you can revive from that. Later on, after they found out he got shot, that was where the police officers back at the concert started to shot. They later on shot the the, the shooter Nathan Gale, and it's just insane. It's something like that happens that you don't expect it. You don't know what's going to happen, and that's insane. But wow, holy crap! And this morning, that I played um I played John Lennon's Imagine album, the CD that I have for a while. I've had it since, I don't even know, but I have had it, like, probably, if I'm, I'm going to say, like, early this year or last year, but, man, it is insane. That a musicianship, your favorite musician passed away suddenly from a shooting, but someone shot them, that's insane. They got, like, assassinated besides politics, but, jeez, it's so sad. John Lennon, even though I will say for John Lennon, his musics are, weren't really my thing. I think I, 
So, yeah, I was giving up a little bit of, of crap at the time because, I mean, for I'm talking about his solo career, but I was talking about, like, in the band of the Beatles, he was awesome, I can't lie. He was awesome, but his voice started to gradually change in the, his solo career with Yuka Ono, and that was where I wasn't a fan because his voice had more of a, a whiny, a whiny, and had a little bit of the grindy voice that he has, and not, I'm not trying to make a comparison of Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, but he does have like a higher like whiny voice that I didn't wasn't a fan of because if you look at the Beatles he had a significantly different like how he sings at it too and his songwriting even though I wasn't a huge fan of his solo career but I will say there's some songs I do enjoy from his solo career but not that much honestly but that doesn't take away all that John Lennon that doesn't take away all that John Lennon has progressively song like as a songwriter he is fantastic he's one of my he's actually one of my favorite songwriters especially for regardless to influence he's definitely one of the biggest influential songwriters along with Lennon and McCartney which is also with Paul McCartney and John Lennon and after John Lennon was assassinated uh, another tragedy happened when um I'm not gonna put it on the video uh, po uh, video that I'm gonna make but it's gonna be a little quick one and this one was George Harrison which he passed away in 2001 in November, I forgot exactly the, but I know he passed away in November 2001 from lung cancer. He was only 57 or 58, but he was a very young age. He was a very young age. He, that was a, still a young age, even though he was older than John Lennon, but he was still young, still young. It's insane, because, I mean, from lung cancer, people had, a, like, because I didn't even know fully at, at the time. I think I've said it before in my videos that I didn't know what happened to George Harrison at the time. But that was, I found out recently that George Harrison had a lung cancer and he was, he was diagnosed with it. He was fighting for it for years. And you can make an argument that he had an incident that happened when a intruder, an intruder, a deranged fan started to stab him. And that was where George Harrison's girlfriend at the time, uh, his wife at the time, or helped him. And that was awesome. It was crazy. Holy crap. And George Harrison later on, two years later, that was where he ha he died from a, a lung cancer at a, at a young age, too. But I will say, like, it's just insane. Some deranged fans can happen to you any time or anywhere. It's insane. It's just crazy. For Dimebag Daryl from Pantera, holy crap. His was pretty insane, too, along with John Lennon. Their both his stories are insane, too. While Mark David Chapman, who assassinated John Lennon, is still alive today while he's in jail, but it's going to be worse for him because he has to deal with the COVID. Holy crap, it's going to be insane for him. But he's still alive. But the shooter who shot Nate, uh, Dimebag Daryl is dead by the name of Nathan Gale. And it's insane. It's The whole story is insane with both of them, too. And holy crap, it's just insane. Holy crap. So, I will say for Pantera, I wasn't a hugest fan of the band. Even though I actually really love Cowboys from Hell, like the album and Valgrind's Play of Power, and even Reinvented the Steel, even though a lot of people didn't really like that album that much compared to like the previous albums that they've made. I, th I guess the reason why was because... I guess the reason why Pantera's Reinvented the Steel wasn't as favorable than the previous ones was because, if I'm correct, was it, it wasn't, I know it wasn't produced by Terry Date, who produced the previous albums, Cowboys from Hell Fall, all the way to the great something, Tread, Tread Kill, something like that. I forgot, I forgot, or the great Tread Kill Southern, something like that. I forgot what the album was. But those are the albums that Terry Date produced, and he didn't produce the last album, Reinvented the Steel, before they broke them in 2003. And that was where Dimebag Dell passed away, and that was where um, Felt on Salomo, that was where he um, he was fighting, where at the time, uh, Felt and Salomo and Dimebag Dell were fighting a little bit for a while, and that was where it suddenly happens. And Felt Phil and Salomo made a video of apologizing for what he has said, especially especially what he has said to Dimebag Dell, and Dimebag Dell sent a letter to Felt and Salomo, and it was so good and nice. I'm going to write it on the screen just in case, because I forgot exactly what he says. But it was insane. Holy crap. It was very heartwarming. And, and holy crap. And especially Dimebag Daryl, when he passed away, nobody, nobody of his family members didn't want to invite Phil and Selma. Or they didn't want him to be in the funeral at all. Because they're afraid that he's going to do a, a, a perform another action to him. 
But one of the funniest stories from Dime Mac Dill has got, well, not the funniest, but one of the craziest stories from Dime Mac Dill in the funeral was where Eddie Van Halen showed up, rest in peace to the guy too, by the way. And he shows up and he gave him a, a, a like a yellow and white guitar from the Van Halen 2 album from the back cover of it. He gave him the actual guitar in the coffin. And the original singer before Phil Anselmo took over from the Pantera and so forth. Back, uh, the old singer, I actually forgot what his name is. He said, quote, about Dime McDill, about that guitar. He, he said, by quote, he says, by quote, Dime McDill, if Dime McDill was alive, if any, if Van, if Van Haley gave him that guitar, he would have said, shoot me now. That's literally what he would have said. And holy crap, that's actually hilarious for me. That was very laughable for me. But wow. Today, like, yeah, I'm not kidding. Like, Dime Mac Daryl and John Lennon passed away the same month and date. That's insane. And they're both of the same cause of death, too. While the one is just by signing autographs, and he didn't, and nobody expected it. While two was in a show. While he was, when, I believe he was, he was at, at the time when he was alive, he was with, um, he was with Vinnie Paul, the drummer of the band Pantera. He was working with him with the band called da Damage Plan, and that was where at the time that he, like, they were playing the show, and that was where our fan got up on stage and started to shot Dimebag Dylan in the back of the head three times in the bowl, in the back of his head. That's, I don't know how it came, people survive from that. Oh, it's, it's ugly. It's terrible. It's gross. It's disgusting who he is, too. He got shot after that for the security. And I'm not going to say it's a good or bad thing, but, man, when he got shot by the security, it was just like, wow. That one was crazy. Holy crap. It's, and he passed away in 2004, by the way. Uh, Dime Bagdell. I was supposed to say John Lennon for some reason. Dime Bagdell passed away in 2004, and I was actually here when his death occurred. I remember he passed away. And... For any kids, younger audiences out there who are watching this, you're probably not going to be familiar with Don Bagdell, but he's a band from Pantera. If you guys are probably familiar with the song Death Metal, which is from the Reinvented into Steel album, which I also have in my room. I also did a review of that album, and I didn't really have too much discussion on the album, and I I am actually very c curious to look back at my review video. It's probably going to look cringy, in my opinion. <laughs> but it's insane. It's just, wow. The album, I know you may not be familiar with the song Death Metal, but if you watch this episode, and I'm not kidding you, that song was in SpongeBob SquarePants, one of the most highly anticipated shows from kids' shows to date. And they're still, I think they're still making it. I don't know. I don't really care about their new seasons at all. And this was in their, you know, in the good era of SpongeBob. Let's just, let's put it the best. We're talking about the original SpongeBob, the real SpongeBob SquarePants. In season two was where they had the episode called Pre-Hibernation Week, and that was where they had the famous song Death Metal. Well, they actually took snippets of Death Metal and made it more slower. I mean, not more, but a little slower than the original. While the original had more of a thrash sound, while the original had more of a heavy metal tradition. And when I first, and I'm not kidding you, when I first heard that song, even for a Spotify, I was just like so blown away. And I was just like, whoa, wow. I've never heard this before, even in, in like, because, like, my expression, I was, because especially when you're kids, when you're in our, if you're, like, a, like, if you're, like, under age of uh, us, like, us, us as 2000s era, like, the early 2000s, I meant, if you were born, like, in the early 2000s, you would definitely know that that song, when you hear that on pre hibernation week, you would expect it, you would not expect this stuff like that. That blows you away. That blew me away when I first watched the episode. When I first saw it, I was just... I remember the, almost the exact same thoughts when I was young. I was just like, whoa. I was just so, like shocked because it was so different, unlike the other episodes. I mean, it was season two. Season two is arguably my favorite season for SpongeBob SquarePants. And I think season three, I don't know. It's hard to argue like how to rank season one through three. I think season one, you know what, season one, screw it. I think season one is probably my second favorite because, I mean, not only did it start at all, but holy crap, it does have iconic episodes. Well, not that not that took away from season three because season three has iconic episodes also, and that was where SpongeBob SquarePants original movie, you know, the two thousand four version, that was where they in the original when it came out they want to end the series just to wrap it up, and they Nickelodeon decided no let's continue it on. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. That's why you keep seeing SpongeBob all over the place and it's annoying. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I can understand why I can I, I can understand the appeal of SpongeBob. I'm not hating on the show. I just hate the way Nickelodeon is is milking down these new seasons while nobody, especially in my generation, are not gonna watch it because how old and how like even though they're trying to make it new, but their new episodes are they get old really fast. They get so old really fast, and I just don't like the new season of SpongeBob. So. I don't know. Season 1 through 3 are definitely the real OGs of SpongeBob. That's it. Period. Because if you got kids don't, if you kids don't can't get into it, you got to understand the you got to understand the time and effort that they've made in season 1 through 3. That's why you got the iconic lines, iconic episodes. Heck, you even got iconic music on there too. And even the SpongeBob SquarePants movie also has so many iconics that a lot of kids in the 2010s, so forth, kids are going to miss out how we used to born and raised something different like that. Because a lot of kids are not born and raised like us. And it's kind of, I mean, they are born and raised with different tastes in music. But it's just, it depends on how parents find it musical, how they find it, their music tastes good and bad. It's, that needs to change. And, holy crap. But back to Dime Back Dale and John Lennon, even though they the cause of death of them, they passed away so soon at the ages. Well, Dime Back Dale was actually two years younger than John Lennon because John Lennon was 40, 40 years old. I was about to say 48. Pa uh, Dime Back Dale was 38. He was two years younger than John Lennon. That one was war sad because they were both young. They were both younger than a lot of musicians. Well, I mean, not a lot, but granted they were older than a lot of 27 year olds musicians that passed away so soon too at the peak of their success but he was still they're still young they were still young 40 years old they were actually younger than my parents now right as of today because my my dad was actually my dad is four years older than John Lennon and my mom is three years or three years older than three years older than John Lennon god dang it I keep so, for some reason, I keep spanning out. I keep getting confused for some reason. I'm almost stubborn. And it's insane. Something like that, you don't know what's going to... This goes to show you that you can't... You don't expect what's going to happen later on in the future, too. And it's crazy how much of a world that we're living in. And something like that can back backstab you and backstab you in real life, too. It's crazy world that we're living in. This world is even crazy today. Holy crap, it's still going on. It's insane. That needs to change, whether you like it or not. Well, anyway, if you guys go to enjoy the video, sorry if I haven't been making videos a lot lately because I've been really busy. And not only that, it's on Christmas, so so I, I don't really have nothing really to make. I mean, granted, I'm actually going to make a video of my review of Merry Christmas, Jake and Josh that I actually watched. And, and I actually watched it when it first came out, Merry Christmas, Jake and Josh. It was actually a movie TV special. Um, made a year after the show wrap up. I'm guessing this was supposed to be made for a wrap up. I'm guessing. I don't know. I know this was. I'm guessing this is pretty a reunion or a comeback. I don't know. But keep, keep on the lookout. I'm gonna do a review on that movie. So stay tuned. And if you guys go to join the video, my social media are in the description: Facebook, Instagram. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends and family, tap the uh, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications to go directly to that video to be notified there every bell clicking right there. I don't know what I was trying to say. I don't know. But anyway, as always, I will see you in the next video. Change the world. Peace and love. For some reason, I almost blacked out. And also, rock on. Or more accurately, keep head banging. Yeah. And... At the end of the video, it's going to be different than most like videos. That At the end of the video, I'm going to do like a minute of silence by showing it. A, a, a minute of silence at the end. So, I'm going to do a minute of silence of it too. And not only that, um, I forgot to mention. I'm, right now, I'm going to do, unlike the ones I haven't do before, I'm going to do a, a, a minute of silence for the heroes that we left, that they left so soon at a young age.
So, that's it, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep it banging. Yeah.